with Dr. Kiwan Kim, thoracic surgeon, North Shore University Health System, placing 12 French quick valve chest tube. And we have the uh, quick valve uh, kit. This comes in eight French, 12 French, 16 French. Um, so it comes in with lidocaine, um, pull prep, syringes, needles, wires, and dilators, serial dilators, and the chest tube. So this is 12 French tube. So we have a 12 French uh, catheter here. So usually, um, you know, just I, I place it either anterior axillary or mid axillary or um, uh, at you know six or seventh you know cost of space so usually six would be the safest for either for effusion or pneumothorax um, if you're on shore you could actually go right lateral to the lip nipple line and then go high up and you should be able to get into that but you know this kit is very safe um, the thing that you you know like you normally you do um, you sterilize areas have a sterile drape, you can put that on. Um, and what I typically do is feel for above the, uh, the, the, uh, the rib where I'll be inserting now. You break up the cap for the uh, local. I usually don't need to sedate the patients. If you give a, a really good local block, you know, castle blocks, um, they are, they tend to do um, fine through the procedure. So if I were to go in to this space and I fill the rib and the ribs would be running in this direction, um, so I can feel if I were to go a little bit more anterior, it would be a little bit um, impure to the, uh, the nipple. This would be the um, sort of a, uh, the, the infra uh, memory fold and I usually go in a little bit of an angle down towards the rib where I feel um, is above the rib and, then, and as soon as I feel the rib I can march it above and enter into the intercostal uh, and pleural space here then you can aspirate then if you get air or fluid then you know that you're in the right space and you withdraw slightly and really give a good block and one thing I you know forgot to do you, you create a wheel make sure you get a good numbing block at the skin before you actually um, inject so now you already confirm the location that you you'll be going in um, then all you have to do is make a small incision. This is, you know, will be a uh, big enough incision for 12 French. And you'll be changing it to the needle for the wire. And you'll be going in the same direction. You fill the rib, you move up, and you enter and aspirate, you'll be in that same space. Once you are in the space, you're almost halfway done. Now at this point, you'll be you know, um, inserting the guide wire. This, I tend to um, ask someone to help grab the wire or you know, casing because it's hard to do by yourself and you'll be inserting. There's a black line here. Once it reaches at that level, then you know the wire is passed beyond the, uh, the needle. So if you hit, you feel the resistance at this point in uh, place, then you probably, needle is not in the uh, pleural space. What I'll do is I'll pull back and then re-guide the wire or the, uh, the needle uh, into the pleural space. And if you goes in smoothly, then here on out, your wire should be in. So I'll just take it out all the way and insert it and take out the needle. 
Now, at this point, you're essentially done. Um, you get serial dilations or dilators. Um, at this point, you, what you don't want to do is you puncture all the way through. Um, all you need to do is create a track between um, here and into the pleural space, and which is probably less than a few centimeters at any way. So you, all you want to do is just create the track. wider, make sure you don't pull out the wire along with it, it's essentially, um, you know, that everyone's used to a cylinder technique, and dilate, now if the skin is a little bit tight, you can always, um, you know, enlarge the skin incision, that's where the resistance and then the tubes can get held up, and then here as you hold on to the wire, you feed the wire through, and at this point you should be in the pleural space so you don't have to, you know, um, uh, place all this catheter. What I do is just slide this out and feed the, uh, the tube into the pleural space and you take everything out. So you're essentially done at this point in time. You know, you don't have to cap it. The patient has pneumothorax or effusion. Um, you know, you may want to just hold it, just cover it don't want the uh, fluid to uh, spilling right at you on your feet, but it's tip and you plug it in and you know you're you're almost done here at this point in time. All you need to do is secure the tube. The way that I secure the tube yeah, this is. Um, is just puncture It's much easier on a real patient. You get this Indeed. out and get a equal length here. You cut out the needle. And you just throw a couple of air knots. reason for that is when you're removing the tube you could just cut this and take this suture out if it's flush to the skin and sometimes it's maybe harder to do that so you created a uh, air knot here and now you can do many different ways you can wrap around and cinch it down but what I do here I have this out on both sides like this and then you loop it around the tube, you go through the loop, and you bring this end into the loop. Can you do that again? Sure, I'll do it here. So you throw loop, so here. side at a time. Mm -hmm. One side at a time. So you put a loop, go through the loop, and bring that end into the loop and out. Do the same. You lay it in front of the tube, you go through the loop, you bring this end out okay. of the loop. And, and good thing about this is now you have the loop on both sides. Mm -hmm. If you pull, it will cinch the tube. You just need to pull and you'll see the tube kind of gets a little bit kinked because this, okay. by doing that, it'll anchor onto it. It's more secure than you are wrapping around. Now, once you pull and you tie this onto the tube, mm -hmm. so in review, air knot, two or three of them, and then loop the tube around mm -hmm. alternating sides tie multiple yep. after you cinch it down okay then it will be secure onto the tube it'll be secure onto the skin and it'll be very hard to pull out unless you rip the skin here and get the whole tube comes out it will it will not um, 
um, slid out through where it's tied, where it's anchored. And you have the two um, almost hubs, so you have like probably three centimeters. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. For for at least twelve French, you could yeah. you could actually go in all the way to the hub, and and that'll be fine. For sixteen French, you want to be at um, probably between eighteen. 16 and 18, like around 18 would be okay. a you know, good, good, good marking. That rationale yeah. again. So this is how I uh, dressed after uh, uh, tube placement and connecting to the uh, atrium or floor bag. Um, I personally don't like, you know, Vaseline gauze. Um, it's unnecessary. You don't need a, a big bulky dressings here because that has serves no purpose. Um, the best way to, at least in my mind, to secure the two um, is put place a together. Just over the two and just cover that. That way, we'll know if the two here, you have a window, whether the tube itself is pulling back, pulling out, at what, what level is secured now and what will be tomorrow or the day after, we'll be able to see. Um, and also, this connection between the chest tube and the um, atrium or pleur bag, this is how I like to secure the tubes. Um, I see, uh, you know, certain uh, patients or, or providers placing and wrapping all this all around. And if you were to do that, we, I cannot see whether there's any point of disconnection between the system. So, and besides, if it gets pulled out, all you need to do is put it back in. The reason why I kind of secure it this way, again, because it's, we can see the connection points and, and troubleshoot the system if they were to do have any air leak uh, make sure, making sure that it's not from the system itself, from disconnection. So here, I, you know, um, uh, uh, strip out a uh, uh, either seal tape or clear tape. You put it across the uh, the um, the tubing, chest tube, and the atrium, all these connection point, and anchor on either side. So I'll just wrap it around here and get another piece of tape. Not, pa not paper tape. No, no <laughs> paper tape. <laughs> paper tape is not going to be enough. Now, if you anchor both ends here, and if you are to pull, and only time that it'll be able to be pulled out is if this tape, which is anchoring, is ripped. And and besides, you know, uh, you know, it's very unlikely that this is going to uh, be pulled. This provides enough. Um, strength here uh, to secure the tube and the connection of the atrium. And here then you can actually see if there are any points of, of gap or disconnection, you'll be able to see the whole tubing. Uh, so tegaderm and this piece of tape strip. And do you worry about the tegaderm not covering the skin completely on the distal end of that so that, you know, there's a some pocket underneath the tube for potential infection to go in or not? No, the chances of having these kind of infections from the chest tube placement mm -hmm. will be very, very low. Okay. Um, so, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that at all. Um, if the patient, let's say, you know, has a persistent air leak beyond three, four, five days, this tube is coming out, that patient is going to the OR. Okay. Um, if the patient has a, a pleural effusion and, and is keep on draining a lot of amount, then the patient will be going to the OR in about yeah. a few days. So, um, you know, this is not a, uh, uh, this is essentially temporary too for a few days. Okay. Um, and if whatever the underlying cause would be, and if, if it doesn't resolve, then the patient will be going to the OR. So, no, I'm not, I'm not concerned. And especially, you know, we're not making a huge thoracotomy incision. This is very small skin incision. You actually have a uh, um, deep enough soft tissue tract that uh, the chances of having any uh, bacteria inoculation within the pleural space will be very, very low. All right. Thank you very much.